guys, Nya Jung. Welcome to Sweet Little Home. It's Evie here, and for today, I wanted to share my three DIY boho decors with you guys. I did use uh, thrifted items to create these beautiful boho decors because I've been wanting to add more boho decors into my home. Um, I've just been loving them a lot lately, so I thought it'd be fun to create these three different decors. They were quite challenging, but super fun to make. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the first DIY project. So I saw this beautiful rug on my Pinterest. It is actually from overstock.com and I really love the detail that they added to the end of the rug. It also looked really easy to DIY it myself. So I decided to recreate the look. And to do that, I'll be using four Jude thrifted placemats, yarn from Dollar Tree, a pair of scissor, a needle, and a glue gun with glue sticks. So off camera, I went ahead and cut my yarn down into strands that were about 18 inches long. And then I'll be working on the shorter end of the placemat where I'll be sewing in my um, yarn. So each of my placemat ended up having different amount of strands used. I don't even know how that happened, but it did. But what I realized is that I needed even amount of yarns when I finished threading them in. Otherwise, when I go and knot them, I wouldn't have enough parts to knot them together if it's odd. And I did have to go back and take some out because they were odd numbers instead of even. So if you plan to do this, definitely make sure that you use even amount of yarn. So once I finish threading all my yarn through the edge of the placemat, I'll be knotting the yarn together. And to do that, the first strand will be knotted by itself. And then strand two and three will be knotted together. And four and five will be knotted together as well and so on until you get to the very last strand. The last strand will be knotted by itself. So to keep it short and simple, the first and last strand are knotted by themselves while everything else in between are coupled up together. After that, I am knotting strand one and half of strand two, which is two and three that I combined earlier with, but I'm going to call it strand two now. So I'll be knotting strand one and half of strand two together. And then after that, I'll split that strand in half and knot the strand that is on the outside and, and knot it by itself. And then I'll go back up to the top and I'll get half of strand three and half of strand two and knot those together as well, making sure that they align with the other knots that I just created. And then I'll be using half of strand two and half of strand one and knotting those together as well. I feel like me explaining this to you guys verbally is so so confusing as opposed to just watching me do it so I definitely recommend just watching it it is so much easier to follow along if you do plan to do this yourself um, anyways I repeated this pattern all the way through until I got to the very end and then I repeated what I did with a strand one and two If you guys do plan to do this, I highly recommend doing it on the edge of a table as opposed to on top of the table. It's just so much easier to tie them while they're dangle as opposed to sitting on top of something. So after that, I went ahead and trimmed the yarn down. And then I flip my mat over so that the bottom is facing towards me and then I glued all the non-threaded edges together which is all four of my place mats in order to create the bigger floor mat and that is pretty much it for this DIY project super simple and easy to do would have been easier if you don't have a place mat and you're just using a regular rug so 
this is how my DIY boho floor mat turned out. No, it isn't perfect, but it is definitely useful, especially for catching dirt and water. Um, this is definitely the easiest out of the three projects that I will be sharing with you guys. Anyways, let me know what you guys thought about this project in the comments down below. And now let's go ahead and get into project number two. So I've been seeing these beautiful boho dream catchers on my Pinterest lately and I'm so in love with them and decided that I will recreate this myself and in order to do that I'll be using a thrifted gold hoop that I had for years. I'll be reusing my wooden beads and then I'll be using yarn from Dollar Tree, a pair of scissor, a needle and a measuring tape. So I started off by measuring my giant hoop and it was 19 inches in diameter. So then I decided to give it about 80 inches in length so that it would be enough to wrap around twice and have enough to hang at the bottom as well. And I cut it 80 strands of these. So I'll be using the Lark's head knot method to attach my yarn to the hoop and I'll repeat this process for all 80 of my strands. Then I separated the strands in half and rotated the bottom to the top and then I moved the strands from the back to the front. After that I grabbed the outermost strand and pulled it behind the yarn and the hoop and then I made a double half hitch knot along the hoop making sure that I am pulling it tightly as well as centering it in place. So on the opposite side, I also grab the outermost strand and pull it behind the yarn, but it will go over the first string that I just attached and then behind the hoop. And then I'll also be using the double half hitch knot to attach it to the hoop. And then I literally repeated this process a million times, you guys. I'm not kidding because I use so much yarn that I had to do this so many times. But then again, I have a giant hoop, so that's why I went for a lot more strands. Um, my arms were hurting so bad from this that I had to remove it from the wall and put it on my uh, tripod in the living room just so I can sit down and finish this up. Guys, so I have done a whole bunch and this is how it turned out. It is looking so beautiful and I am thinking about stopping here even though I still have quite a bit left to go as you guys can see. Um, but I think it looks so pretty if I turn it around. Let me show you guys. If I turn it around this way, look how beautiful that looks. I like the back side more. So I'm going to go with that. Next, I threaded my wooden bead to the center of my dream catcher using the biggest size I had first and then I went down a size to the middle size that I had and then I went with the smallest size all the way to the end. And once I got to the end, I did a knot to keep them in place. So the last thing I did was trim off the yarn and oh my gosh you guys this is not my specialty I cannot make anything straight especially when it comes to cutting in a straight line I cannot do that I struggle so bad here as you guys will see and so I just kind of winged it and just started cutting it um, and I think it turned out decent okay I'm not too sure but yeah so this is it for this project 
So this is how my beautiful boho dream catcher turned out. I am so in love with it, you guys. The hard work definitely paid off. This was probably the most tedious and hardest DIY project in this video. And I was really close to giving up on doing it. I mean, I did give up on looping the thread back and forth, but um, it still turned out great and amazing and beautiful and I love it. But of course, I would love to know what you guys thought about this project in the comments down below. And if you guys are inspired to create one yourself, you definitely should. These are so beautiful to do and they are pretty easy to do. It just takes a lot of time and patience, but it is 100% worth it when you uh, make it yourself. Let's move on to the last DIY project. So for this last project, I really love this basket from Anthropology, but of course I cannot afford anything from there. They are so expensive. So I decided to use my thrifted basket that I got for free to recreate the look. So like I mentioned, I'll be using my free thrifted basket, black chalk paint from Dollar Tree twine that is also from Dollar Tree, glue guns and glue sticks, blue painter's tape, paintbrush, scissor, and yarn from Dollar Tree as well. So to start this off, I'll be taping the bottom of my basket down so that I can paint it with black chalk paint, but you guys will see later on that I had to uh, paint more of the basket because I didn't go up high enough. After I finished painting the basket, I went ahead and took off the tape while the paint is still dry and then I set the basket outside to dry. After that, I went ahead and worked on my tassels. I created 52 of these in total to go around the entire basket. For my tassels, I wanted to make sure that they were pretty skinny so I only wrapped the yarn around my fingers 15 times. So this is the part where I realized I did not paint the black high enough. You can see a giant gap between the tassel and the black paint. So here I am again, retaping the basket and repainting the basket. So that wasn't the only mistake that I did with this project. After I glued down my tassels, I realized that I should have wrapped the basket with the twine first because I didn't like how the basket was showing through. Um, I think this is totally a personal preference, um, but yeah, I had to remove the tassels and they were quite difficult to remove. I struggled removing them as you guys can see it was a deadly struggle <laughs> anyways i removed them and then i used the twine and wrapped it around the basket making sure that i started low enough so that the basket doesn't show from underneath the tassels And finally, I was able to glue down all 52 of my tassels without worrying about making any more mistakes. Um, and so this is it for this project. Oh. 
oh wait i'm <laughs> just kidding you guys the for reals last thing that i did was trim off the yarn and just like the second project i sucked at making it straight but i tried So this is how my beautiful boho basket turned out and yes you guys my ribbons are so uneven I actually tried really hard to make them straight but the more I cut the more uneven they became and I didn't want them to be super short so I was like okay whatever it is what it is and i'm going to go with it um i think that this basket still turned out really really cute and perfect for easter as well unfortunately we won't be doing anything for easter this year as we are visiting family out of state and we'll be coming back home on easter day so this basket i'm not too sure what i will do with it if you guys have any suggestions please let me know what i should do with this beautiful basket all right guys this is it for my three diy boho decors using thrifted items um, even though I dissemble upon quite a few headaches here and there, it's okay. It's all a learning process and that's part of being a DIYer. You deal with this all the time. And I also love sharing these things with you guys as well so that you don't make the same mistakes as I do and so that you can do a lot better than I do as well. <laughs> anyways thank you guys so much for joining me don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so please also like this video i'll appreciate it so so much uh, thank you thank you again have a blessed and wonderful day and i'll see you guys in my next video